Imagine you move from a place where you lived all your life. Imagine you move and you leave all your children and wife. Starting all over again, but no one you know is around. Well, they didn't have to imagine. They built it up from the ground. How does it sound? It's not easy because it isn't. Could have phrased them, but it didn't. But the ray bond, that's a winner. And they ran straight to the finish. You get to know them up close and personal. Wait, just give me a minute. Welcome to the front row. Can I get a drum roll? Intentional, intentional, we may be immigrants, but we are still intentional. We are dependable, it's just that set the bar, but still the best of all, we are intentional. Welcome to the Intentional Immigrants Podcast and Channel. I'm your host, Yolanda Jack, and I'm delighted that you're able to join me here today. Today we'll be talking with Bumi. Chupati. She is, she has two businesses. One is Edupower Academy and the other is a dance academy, Ananta Dance Academy. But just before we speak with Bumi to see what she has to say, one, coming to Canada as an international student and then branching off and starting her own businesses, I would just like to let you know that I will be taking a break from the Intentional Immigrants podcast and channel. So for the next next little while, you will not have any recordings. The website will still be active, but we won't be having any YouTube recordings or video recordings. So we're taking a pause on it. So just wanted you to know. All right. So just before we speak with Bumi, just reminding you, if you've not already done so, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to the podcast or the YouTube channel. The podcast is available on Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcast, and Podbean. And of course, there's a YouTube channel Intentional Immigrants, and the website is www.intentionalimmigrants.com. So this is going to be our last recording for right now until further notice. Hoping that the recordings have been beneficial to you or to someone you know, you are able to learn something or even to share information with your friends. Thank you for your support. Thank you for the persons who have been willing to be interviewed on the podcast. All right, thank you. All right, so let's hear what Bumi has to say to us today. Hi, Bumi. Welcome to the Intentional Immigrants podcast and channel. We're delighted that you're able to join us here today. Yes, thank you so much for the invite, Yolander. And it was, it's really a pleasure to be here. And I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So tell us a bit about yourself. Who are you? Where did you come from? Where are you located? Why did you come here? <laughs> Yes, so uh, my name is Bhumi Tripathi. Right now I am in Edmonton. Um, I, um, uh, like initially I immigrated to Fort Mac. That's in um, also Alberta. It's a little bit far north from Edmonton. And yes, I came in around 2013 and I have been here um, since nine, nine, eight, nine, nine years, nine and a half a half year and yes um i immigrated to canada for education and then i love this country so much that i decided to settle here (laughs) (laughs) okay cool oh you came as an international student that's correct that's good that's good all right and you studied what program did you study i studied environmental science so yes so uh, initially i was uh I was a transfer student from India, uh, so I was transferred to do masters at uh, in uh, Ontario. But because mm-hmm. of some personal reasons, I was not able to continue that. So I had to take a transfer to Fort Mac, 
And that was one of the best decisions of my life. Cool. I'm happy to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Because I, I'm, I'm a person who loves a um, uh, little bit of a countryside environment. Like I'm not yes. very much into, uh, I, I love small towns and, you know, and Fort Mac is a big family. Even today yeah. when I go there, I feel like everybody knows everyone. So that's yeah. the beauty of it. I love that place. Uh, yes, I like that too. I like the country setting. I like yes, yes. And yeah. everybody is so welcoming. I'm not saying that it's not like that in Ontario. Must be. I have never lived there, so I do not mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. But I feel like Fort Mac was very welcoming. Um, initially, I had a hard time understanding the accent because in India, we <laughs> were speaking English as well. But the accent is very, um, very different very different right and then the pronunciations were a little different and mm -hmm. so when people and in, in Fort Mac we have mostly Newfoundlanders right so they would come and they would like guru, 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 guru. they will talk too fast I have no clue so and then it was so beautiful that they um, I remember I was used to work at Staples initially as a student mm -hmm. and uh, the staff was great uh, people were great and the clients who will come in I have would tell them that I'm new. I do not understand what you're saying. So they will go slow. And so it was so, so good. So beautiful. Oh, I'm happy. I'm happy you had a good experience as an international student. Yes. Yes. All right. So tell us, you are currently a business owner. What sort of business are you into? So I, I run a dance school. Mm, that's the logo. It's that's called Anastas Dance Academy. And I do another business too. It's called EduPower Academy. That's a tutoring service. So okay. basically I'm in the field of teaching. So it's kind of a mix of math and sciences because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm from India. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it comes up with it. And yes, and the dance part of it. So Ananta's Dance Academy is one of the fastest growing dance school in Edmonton. Um, it teaches the Bollywood dance of India, then the Bharatanatyam. It's also Indian classical dance from a form of India that we teach Bhangra. And so basically it's uh, like Indian folk dances is what is taught at our dance school. Okay. Yes. Okay. And Edu Power Academy takes care of the um, math and sciences uh, aspect of the academics. Mm -hmm. And yes. <laughs> okay. Can I ask what... What motivated you to offer both of these services? Because they are so different. I mean, they are, it's still teaching, but this mm -hmm. area is so very different. Yes, so true, so true. So this all started with a, after my, so and when I graduated from Keanu College, um, I got a, uh, like I, I had the highest GPA in the college. So I got a, um, you know, the, the Elizabeth Quinn's award that we get, the mm -hmm. medal. So mm -hmm. that's what uh, I got. And then what happened is, so I was, I was a very good student. Like I was very good in education. Mm -hmm. And then I started working for a company, which I do not want to say a name. Oh, um, that's fine. But yeah, so I started working at the company. It was a very, it was initially a very good experience, but mm -hmm. I felt like the, the progress was so stagnant and I was look, talking to people there mm -hmm. and uh, I realized that there were people who were at the same position for 10, 12 years. Wow. And for me, that was a very, very big demotivator. For me, yeah. it was because I feel like we should always be having a goal and mm -hmm. we should, there should be something to keep you motivated. Mm -hmm. um, so the job there was more of like, you go at eight o'clock in the morning, you do your work, you come home. And so that was, it was very monotonous. There was no excitement. So <laughs> I was, I told my husband that, um, uh, it, it doesn't feel great. I, I don't feel great about it. So he said, okay, you love teaching because I used to work as a, um, like a tutor at Keanu College. Okay, when I was tutor. Studying to, yeah, a tutor, yes. Okay. So I used to work there um, and I love tutoring. I love it. I love it. So uh, he's like, okay, why don't you start something part-time? So I started taking tutoring just on cash, very basic, maybe two, three hours a week or mm -hmm. something. And I started getting students exponentially. 
like every day I would get a couple calls that Bumi, can you take them because people loved my work and then eventually I just quit that job and uh, Eddie Power was born so okay. yes when was and it then eddie power was successful and i always had passion for dance um i had uh, i train i i i'm a trained dancer back home and uh, i did a lot of like 14 years i gave to dance of my life so my husband is like oh why don't you start something on the side and yeah so that side became main business <laughs> oh, so and the that, dance is the main business yes Yes, and yes, Edu Power yes. is now the part-time business. Yes, the Edu Power is a part-time business, <laughs> and I also teach courses for Kiana College right now. Oh, okay, cool. That's good. Yes. So you're a full-fledged teacher. <laughs> I'm a full-fledged teacher, and I love that. Love that. Um, the beauty about um the beauty about Canada, I would say, is um it's a land of opportunities. If you do, if you can do your work properly. Um, if you are very honest about your work, if you have ethics, and if you believe in progressing, there are opportunities. If you're lazy and you just be like, oh, I don't want to do anything, I just want a paycheck, then it works that way. And it's everywhere, I think. It's yeah, it's everywhere like that. Okay, that's good to hear. When was Eddie Power born? Who? Eddie Power? Power, yeah. Uh, Eddie Power was born in 2015. 2015, okay. Yes, yes. And yes. when was the dance dance school? Dance school was born in 2018. 2018, okay, okay. All right. Yes, yes. So it took me three years to realize that I love dance. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good to hear. Because when I was doing Eddie Power, at the same time, I was teaching mathematics at Keanu College. Mm-hmm. Yes, so it was going side by side, and then yes, I I started the dance school, and the dance school itself was a very um, it was made of a startup that I wanted to do for passion. So on fifteenth June twenty nineteen, I started taking enrollments for my dance school. There were three enroll three kids who enrolled for that that day. By mm -hmm. December, we had eighty students registered, and right now we have over two hundred and twenty students at our dance school. Wow, wow, that is growth. I know, I know, I know. It grew like that. And as I said before, too, it takes a lot of hard work. And there is an, a philosophy behind the dance school that I'll share uh, shortly. It takes a lot of hard work. But again, as I said, it all depends on your ethics and how hard you want to work, how smart you want to work. Yes, yes, yes that's good. So is it a dance school that's that's mainly for kids and what if so what's the age range for the clients i think mm -hmm. so the students, clients what do you call them are they clients or are they students <laughs> you can call whatever student my students will love to hear even if they get a little bit of uh, publicity they will love it they will like oh you were mentioned <laughs> uh, so yes um anybody who's above four is welcome at our dance school above four is there above a four. Age? yes Four years of age, yes, yes. So beginning at four, what about yes. 20 or 25? Everybody. So we have the, the youngest student I have right now is a four-year-old. And yes. the oldest student that I have is 64-year-old. 64, okay, cool. So we go from four to 64. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So we, everybody's welcome. And that's what Ada, that's why, like, that's what our school is called, Ada. Ada in Hindi, it translates to um, a, um, kind of a, a style or some kind of a swag, you can call it. And, um, and it is Ananta's Dance Academy. So I will refer to it as Ada. So in, at Ada, the, our philosophy is very clear. Everybody is welcome, like okay. regardless of your age, regardless of your, um, where are you from or... Mm -hmm which country you belong, no question asked. Everybody's equally welcome, no judgments. Okay, okay, cool. That's, so people people join for, do you find that people join for exercise as well? Yes, yes. So we have different uh, wings, you can call it. Mm -hmm. So we have intensive uh, performing wing, then we have uh, just kind of learning dance wing. Then mm -hmm. we also have a workout class. 
but okay. everybody the the base of everything is um dance so even if we have a workout class it's more of a dance workout okay that's cool that's cool yes i'm interested all right <laughs> yes you're more than welcome to come <laughs> <laughs> how yeah. did the pandemic how did COVID-19 and all that it brought with it how did that affect you and your business model yes yes it did it did and um <laughs> dance online is good but it doesn't work as well as in person in person because yeah. Ada is uh, for our, our, for us it's more of like our philosophy is engagement the kids mm -hmm. kids learn a lot while having a lot of fun that's what our ideology is and mm -hmm. what happens in online classes that that interaction is missing mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah. so we did kind of got through it mm -hmm. but it did not we did lose a lot of client base that time and we did have a little bit of a hardship um as a in, as an individual i did not suffer a lot because i had two places to work right i had edupower as mm -hmm. well as ada and i was also taking courses for mm -hmm. the college so mm -hmm. that's why as an individual i did not suffer but um the business yes it does did suffer a lot mm -hmm. okay uh, so edupower was doing better than mm -hmm. because edupower um i had a kind of a vision that with time everything is going to go online so okay. edupower even though it started 2015 i did take in person classes mm -hmm. initially uh, but i did not i felt like online is something a way to go and kids mm -hmm. should be adapting to it so mm -hmm. what i did is i used a, a lot of um uh online resources in mm -hmm. order to keep, make the class extremely engaging so mm -hmm. we used animation to teach kids we did online laboratory etc etc so edupower even though it was early in time it was online from before okay. so when covid hit mm -hmm. the, the client base was already there oh cool in fact it got a ray up like a raise because we were online we were all set we were all ready to go even though so it it actually worked out covid was a favor to for you yeah it worked out very favorable yes yes so edupower had a growth ananta had a downfall so it all balanced out luckily you had two business going at the same time yeah, and i i believe in that i feel like you should always should always have a diversified economy because if one crashes the other would help yeah, you something else though yeah something else to lean on okay that's yeah. cool that's cool all right tell me one one experience that blew you away in terms of the impact of your service that you offer so um ada itself was born on a very emotional um story mm -hmm. so um when i was growing up i had i had a passion for dance and i started my dance journey when i was just 3 and a half years old um my mom actually made me start it right mm -hmm. so that time my mom and dad we came from a very lower middle class family mm -hmm. and my mom used to take a bike because we could not couldn't afford a ride Mm -hmm. um a car or a vehicle uh, so my mom used to take a bike and we used to put us to different places and mm -hmm. my dad um would maybe cut his cost would not buy a pair of clothes or anything uh, in order to support my dance classes so because mm -hmm. i used to learn hip hop i used to learn um, bharatanatyam i used to learn kuchipudi i used to learn folk dances and everything had a fee attached of right of course so lots of stage performances this that and my brother was also learning um piano and all those. so our active our extra curriculars plus our curricular you was costing them fortune right mm -hmm. so they had to cut a lot of their cost mm -hmm. so the ada was born on the idea that it should be affordable to mm -hmm. every parent Mm -hmm. if your if your as i said everybody is welcome and that's the mm -hmm. definition of it so ada was born that the quality is like the high standard 
but at the same time the affordability is such mm -hmm. that even if you're living like if you are a very low income family mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. still afford the price so you do not have to cut like the way my parents had to cut their mm -hmm. uh, you know they would not buy clothes and etc etc so that was the whole idea behind ada so that was my personal experience um even right now some of my parents tell me like my clients tell me um that uh, bhumi you should be charging for this why you're not charging for this you're why you're not charging for this? i was like no the the motto of this school is regardless um which family background you come in you are welcome if, if even if you're rich we don't want extra money from you it's fine you're rich you can keep it with yourself so um so that that's the concept so that my experience as a child is mm. what has shaped the school and that ethic uh, the, the, that ethics that it should be for everybody is what is all inclusive the motto of the school yeah yeah okay cool that's good to hear what's your personal philosophy or mantra my personal philosophy is education mm -hmm. or let it be any education could be anything like knowledge let me call it knowledge mm -hmm. knowledge is something that should be accessible to everyone on this earth mm -hmm. and that is something i i believe in so knowledge and um food those are the two things that i work even right now i'm i'm uh, in connection with lots of ngos back home also i used to do it is uh, just the food because hunger has no religion and education or knowledge is should be reached to every single person if they desire that's that's my that's that's all i care yeah. <laughs> all right thank you what can you share a book or two Mm -hmm. that that you would recommend our viewers to read mhm mm mm -hmm. yes so for the book reading i would suggest you to read i let me see if i have it here i can show you the cover if we can yeah. find I personally love this book. Okay. Yeah, it's called Hit Refresh by Satya Nadella. Okay. Yes. So, it's a beautiful book. It's all about any time you have a trouble, you hit refresh. <laughs> so, I would tell every viewer and I'm I'm making an assumption here that the your viewers would be the ones who have already immigrated or the ones who are looking into immigration. That's fine. So, if you have a a plan in your life and if you have a goal in your life, it is not always that it works out. I changed so many fields and still I'm successful right now. Mm -hmm. So, I started with biochemistry Uh, I hold masters in biochemistry. Then I turned to environmental science. I did some work there. Then I switched to academics. I was successful there. But then I switched to dance school. They are not connected to anything. Like they're not literally connected. Okay, but it still works, and it's okay to change until you find a solution, a place where you want to work. But at the same time, you have to keep your eyes open. You have to think. Um, just work on your passion. and money would follow don't work for money that's what i would say and any time you feel like you're stuck it's really fresh <laughs> <laughs> okay it's okay to be stuck because that's how you learn right so okay. if you're planning to immigrate it's uh, to canada it's a wonderful place to be part of beautiful culture multi there is a lot of diversity um here oh, we we all coexist we all cohabit in this whole in this country and it works well and it's a very beautiful place uh, all you have to be um you should be thinking about is once you get here um always look for resources there are a lot of resources available for you to develop and yeah and there is one more book that i personally um it's it's a kind of a spiritual book but it's um autobiography of a yogi that is also one of my favorite reads 
I thought about reading that uh, book when I um, came to know that Bill Gates read it. And I'm like, what is so fascinating about that book that Bill Gates read it? But yeah, those are the two books I would suggest. Those are the two books. All right. Thank you. No problem. The listeners may contact with you. Um, so if you have any questions, um, I would love to answer it. Uh, you can either text me on 780-504-9922. Uh, I, would, I would suggest you not to call the, a text because mm -hmm. if I have a text, I will definitely answer it as I receive it. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, or you can email it to me at info at anantagansac.ca. So, and I would definitely get back to you. I might be a couple days here and there, but I will get back to you. <laughs> okay. Bhumi, thank you so very much for joining me here today and for sharing with my viewers. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you so much. And I really hope it would help you at some part of your journey. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Bhumi. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to the Intentional Immigrants podcast and channel. Thank you to the following persons who made today's episode possible. Bhumi Trapathi of Edupower Academy and Ananta Dance Academy. Xavier Anderson for providing music. As always, I'm your host, Yolanda Jack, reminding you, he who watches the wind will not sow. He who watches the clouds will not reap. Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 4. You were born for greatness. Step out into your greatness so that mankind can benefit from you being here. So long. Until next time. Intentional. Intentional. We may be immigrants, but we are still intentional. We are dependable. It's just a set the bar. We're still a